Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Run the Numbers with Maurice L. Wilson. Today I want to talk about something that's trending uh, with my clients and with just people I'm running into uh, during this fall 2023 benefits enrollment season. A lot of your employers, particularly at your major companies and government uh, employers, you know, state employees, teachers, uh, policemen, things of that nature. You're starting to see government workers. You're starting to see the options for a Roth 401k or a similar plan. And I'm starting to get, to get questions about should you do a Roth 401k or stick with the pre-tax 401k. So what I like about being an engineer uh, formally and then becoming a financial advisor is that we can take these types of subjective questions and simply provide objective answers uh, simply by running the numbers. So that's why I started doing something called Let's Run the Numbers. And that is what we're going to do today. So we always say 401k because it's the most popular um, you know, plan or retirement plan. But there are other folks with the 403b, the TSP for your federal employees, uh, the thrift savings plan. Then, of course, for your self-employed uh, people, you have the SEP IRA. So there is now a Roth or after tax uh, version of all of these plans. And so I'm going to paraphrase by saying Roth 401k, but know that the term is interchangeable for any of these savings plans. So let's get to it. I got a side by side comparison of the pre tax savings plan with the Roth savings plan. And let's just start from the top. Money comes in. They're both going to contribute $10,000 over the course of a year. I know some of you are doing up to the max 22.5, and then some of you over 50 are doing 30,000. Uh, but today we're just going to stick with some nice, easy numbers, and we're going to assume that both people are contributing 10,000. Now, the pre tax person will not pay any taxes. As you all know, that 10,000 is tax deductible, tax deferred, and so there are no taxes paid. It's pre tax dollars. The Roth contributor is going to pay 10, uh, 2,000, 20% in taxes. Uh, and then uh, we're going to assume that each one of these $10,000 contributions will, will grow to $20,000 over you know, six to eight years, typically, is what it takes to, to double that money. Um, now, taxes owed for the pre tax person, when they finally pull that money out, uh, they're going to pay 20%, right? 20 times 20,000 uh, 20, is $4,000. Now, the Roth person is not going to owe any taxes. They've already paid their taxes up front. So they don't owe any taxes. And this starts to have some implications on the after tax value. I was talking with a couple of people this week, and some folks do not know that you do owe taxes on your 401k. So when you look at your 401k, you have to consider the after tax value of that money. It's not what you see on the screen. With the Roth 401k, the Roth 403b, the Roth TSP, uh, you don't have that issue. So the after tax value for the pre-tax versus the Roth 401k, you can see the difference for yourself. But let's bring it in the greater relief. The total return, you know, you had 16,000 because you paid 4,000 in taxes. Total return for the pre-tax 401k is 60%. Total return for the Roth 401k is a tick higher. It is 80%. And that is because you simply paid less in taxes. Uh, and that is the key. Uh, with the Roth versus the pre-tax. What I try to tell folks, if, if I'm talking to any engineers or mathematicians out there, X versus X plus one. With the pre-tax, you pay taxes on X plus one. With the Roth, you pay taxes on X. Now let's make this more plain for people who aren't into the math, if you will. With the Roth or the after-tax, you are simply paying taxes on the contributions. With the pre-tax, you're gonna pay taxes on everything, the contributions plus the growth. So taxes on 20,000 are always gonna be higher than taxes on 10,000. The only way this doesn't work is if you actually lose money in your 401k. So you put, put 10,000 in and you pull out 8,000. But you're still losing because you paid taxes on 2000 and then you lost 2000 so it's still money going out so that is one of the key differentiators a lot of people simply focus on 
this number right here. Hey, I'm not paying any taxes or I got to deduct taxes when I put money in this 401k. That is all true. But when it all comes out in the wash, you're going to owe more taxes because you deduct it. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, now, there's one key thing you have to know, because some of you are going to look at this and say, hey, I'm no dummy. I'm going to start doing the Roth 401k, 403b, TSP. One thing you have to keep in mind when you're doing this, and that is there's a key to switching from the pre-tax to the Roth savings plan. And it's simply this equal dollar contribution amounts because what's going to happen is if you've been deducting what you've been contributing you're used to a certain amount in your paycheck that's going to change when you start going with the after-tax contributions so what's going to happen is that two thousand dollars we showed on the previous screen that's got to come out of somewhere and it's going to come out of your bottom line what I typically tell people kind of jokingly, but I actually am serious. Look at your eating out budget. Usually most people are spending too much money eating out. The money that can cover the taxes on your post-tax contributions is usually going out the door in terms of DoorDash and eating out, um, not cooking your own food, what you're eating for lunch. You're splurging somewhere where you can pull that money in and make equal dollar contributions. If you don't make equal dollar contributions, then nothing we just shown today will work because you're essentially putting less money in on a post-tax basis. So to be clear, if you're doing 10,000 pre-tax, you got to do 10,000 after tax. Otherwise, this doesn't work. This is Let's Run the Numbers with Maurice L. Wilson. If you need someone to work with, look at your account. Here are my minimums. Here are my fees. Here's my email. Feel free to reach out to me. You can find me on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. Hope you have a great day, and I hope this helps. Talk to you next time on Let's Run the Numbers.